Well, hello there, human species earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it. So I'm Bush Grom Blitz, and today we're going to be having a look at three very, very different tanks doing three very, very similar things. This is the MT-25, the E-50, and the FE-4202. We're going to see three enormous damage games uh, for these tanks in terms of their peers. The MT-25 is the first one off the rank, but we're going to have Elmiri's game first, and then we're going to see... Awesome 785, and finally Black Krieg in the FV4202. Now, all three games are absolutely crackerjack and should be watched. Uh, and I decided to do this today because basically there's been such negativity around uh, some of the patch stuff that's coming out. Well, not even coming out because it was just open test, remember? Uh, that stuff with the texture changes and everything. Um, so I wanted to bring a little bit of light and joy into the world. So if you want to watch good tanking, watch this. Now... Our Grub Elmiri here manages to get an easy kill in at the back first with some AFK Wally, uh, which is fair enough. Uh, you get that on the big jobs at T34. He's obviously moved his turret when he's gone in and then said, you know what, that's enough work for the day. I'm just going to sit at the back here and get carried. And getting carried indeed looks like what's going to happen because Elmiri's team is getting flogged. They are down one tank to two and down three tanks to one, in fact now and uh there's only three green guys over there and there's a lot of big boppers in the red team in fact the funny thing i find about this match is this tank is now absolutely underrated the mt25 i'm going to do another video on the mt25 when it first came out it was the red-headed stepchild of blitz it was a terrible tank uh and it was up against some of the best tanks that money could buy Tier 6 really did have that phenomenal guard tank, the VK-2801, which is still very, very strong, but nowhere near where it was when the MT-25 came out first. And when you're seeing tanks like SU-152s and such, when you get up to Tier 7 and KV-2s, that can be pretty daunting. What I really enjoy about this game, though, is the ridiculous aggression that you can see from the autoloader here. Here's come screaming around that corner, dumped a full clip, nearly wrecked, the German TD and got a kill in there as well on the SU-100. Now the KV-1 is pointing around the back, sets him on fire. Things are looking very, very grim for our Amigo. But look at that auto loader, pump the damage. That's what he's after. And now he's gonna use the other key feature of any good light tank, the mobility to get around here and get shots. Clearing one, clearing two, thank you very much. And suddenly it's gone from four on one to two on one and that's a lot better in terms of odds i mean if you ask me would i rather face four tanks at once or two i'd go with two very nice sneaking in plenty of shots there as he crests the auto loader on this thing has a ridiculously fast rate of fire it's not automatic but it is damn close. Between shells, you have 0.7 seconds left. That is the same time frame that it takes to pump out a shell in the Kenny Otsu. So if you've been playing that tank ever, then you'd understand exactly how quickly this thing can fire. Now, things are tough here, though. That is a lot of hit points to get through. And very, very wisely, Elmiri takes the long view. He's going to use the camouflage, the mobility, and the concealment to actually get shots in from the flanks on these big boys over here because the armor profiles that he's facing are not for frontal assault especially when you're driving a tank like this that is not really going to bounce a whole hell of a lot out of what is a very good french heavy tank and a very good british td in terms of their gun handling and their penetration numbers there's a couple of things going on here boys and girls number one elmiri got a little bit screwed there by this ARL-44. He pushed around that corner, uh, unsighted, and hit him broadside. So he's down on 209 hit points. So he's looking tough. But number two, he still owns the battlefield in terms of mobility. So while the AT-8 is going to pop in the cap circle, Elmiri is going to work the numbers. Work the numbers... He's going to go to where the most likely positive outcome for him is. And that is getting a long distance view on that cap circle or possibly clearing this ARL uh, by broadsiding him and circle of deathing him. You can see the cap circle, though, is actually increasing. It's going faster, and that means there's now two tanks in that cap. And Elmeri is going to take full advantage of that and get some lovely shots in. Now, at 204 meters, he is absolutely unspotted there. So he gets three big clips in, three big uh, shots in from that clip, and now he's got to contend with 
the A uh, AT8. How's he gonna do that? Well, exactly like he just did there with the ARL, he is gonna push up to the top of this area here, and instead of actually being visible when he comes up here, but of course he is behind this foliage, he is gonna be able to get a clear shot into the side of the ARL, and even squeeze a couple more in on the AT8. Now things have completely switched around 360 or 180 degrees here. Not 360, because then they'd be looking in the same direction. Uh, things have switched around. They've flipped. We've flipped the script, baby. Uh, it's gone 180 degrees, and Elmiri has now got to be in the box seat. Despite the fact that he has a lot less hit points than that ATA, he's able to completely dictate the terms of the engagement. You can see he's spotting the ATA first. He gets shots in, makes him miss once pulls back, goes for a full clip reload. He can even afford to take a hit from that AT-8. Here he goes again, the AT-8 pushes forward. Now that's a devastating blow uh, for the red team's chances because when you push into a light or a medium tank and you don't know where they are, you are shortening up the distance. And if they can get past you, beside you or behind you, then wow, you are absolutely screwed. And lo and behold, that's exactly what Elmiri is able to do with a big circle of death. And despite bouncing one shot, it is all over bar the shouting now. It is absolutely 100% done like a chicken dinner. Bouncy, hitty, bouncy, hit, hit. And Billy the Kid goes down. Oh, I don't like Elmiri's easy at the end there because that was not easy by any stretch of the imagination and i nearly didn't include it because that's a low call the easy <laughs> but you know so for future reference if you want to get your video in here probably not best to type that at the end of it still in all an mt25 with three and a half nearly 3600 damage uh six kills top gun high caliber mastery badge all that kind of stuff that's pretty special for a tier six and it wasn't a hard sell to get me to include that one in a video Likewise, it was not a hard sell to get me to include this one in a video. This is one of the best E50 games I've ever seen. And I trust me, I've played hundreds and hundreds of games in the E50, both myself and with my mates in platoon. And it's an absolute testament to the drive here. This is a brilliant drive. Our Amigo is perfectly situated. Awesome 785 in the E50 is a much better yeah, you can see RU change position is 100% spot on. This is absolutely built for the E50, this spot. And uh, he doesn't want to share it, doesn't want to share it with anyone. The RU can't help himself. He's going to push up there anyway. Probably not a great idea, but he might get some shots in. You never know your luck in the big city. He's going to get tagged pretty hard. Now, this is a tier 9 game. There are three tier 9 tanks on the red team, and there are three tier 9 tanks on the green team. And the good guys have got an E50 over here, though, who is primed up and ready for action. Now, he wants to... Oh, are you? Don't go out sideways, dude. You are very, very lucky not to get wrecked there. I'd be He's desperate for that kill. And awesome 785 after another bounce and then a little hit gets the kill anyway. There's still three reds over here. Awesome 785 is doing a great job here of angling his E50 up and getting shots in. That T49 wants absolutely no part of the E50. That is a train wreck of a tank for a T49 to deal with. If he gets a ram on the E50, he'll get deleted. If he uh, tries to HE him, he's going to have a tough time penning anything. And the PTA now pushing up. This is probably not a great idea to cross over there in front of the camping TDs at the back. But he's done it now. And there you go. The T49 pumps in a HE shell. That was the only option he had. A HE shell through. The Leopard PTA gets wrecked. Just a monstrously large amount of damage getting dealt over here on the eastern flank by this E50. Awesome 785, pushes into the back, rams, boom, and have a look at that, 520 points worth of damage. Absolutely adore it. That is how you do the business. And he's around there under the T49, 436 HE alpha damage, another ram, bang, this is massive. It's not a long game, boys and girls, but it is a huge game. 
He's managed to clear the uh, the T49 and the Super Pershing there in very, very quick succession. And he's just now going to do a full Kolobinov to get the win. He's into the Tiger 2. There's a Tiger 2. There is a uh, East, not an East 75, AMX 5100 down there as well. And you can see on the right, oh, here comes trouble. Let's have another ram. Bang! <laughs> another ram! I love this game. This is an absolutely glorious game. The M103 is pushing in here now. The Tiger 2, he's got that lovely 310 alpha damage gun. He's got to try and get a shot. Oh, big bounce, but another bounce on the other side. Need another bounce here. Oh, big bounce. He's dropped the adrenaline. Can he get one in the lower glaces? Bang! Just gotta get this round. Takes a big roll. Oh, actually, a low roll there for the Tiger 2. But he does clear one up. Now he's going to side scrape off the carcass of this T49. Look at the wiggling and the jiggling. Driving in, pushing, making it just really pressure soaked for this poor old Tiger 2. It's now turned into a one on one, one shot, and he is cleared. Come on, man, you've got to do this. you got to do this. Drive in. Big bounce. Can he clutch it? This is huge. This is for a harass. Absolutely massive, awesome 785 monster game. Now, as enjoyable and entertaining as that game is, and the lovely tension that was built, uh, you're going to see another game now from Black Creek in the FV4202 that is every bit as freaking tense, and I think every bit as good. Now, this is a brilliant game, because this is every bit as intense, and the pressure and the tension builds from start to finish. Starts off very slowly. Now, you're going to see, in typical Blitz fashion, the heavies are sitting at the bridge waiting to be fed uh, their dinner. Uh, the mediums are sitting on the flank waiting for the heavies to spot the targets for them. And both of them decide that the other side is not doing their job correctly. What actually is happening here is the red team is playing really, really well. They all line up and have the seven man iron fist push right through the middle of the map and smash the green heavies. Now. That's a really good job. There's no way they could have spotted that. Um, they went to the flank. They tried to spot. There was no one there. All the red guys were up there. They were unspottable. The only person that could have spotted them was the heavy tanks for the green team. And unfortunately, they were waiting for the targets to come into them. The other controversial part of this game for me is that this is a heat-firing FV4202. I prefer to play the 4202 with the Hesh gun that has premium Hesh as a premium round. But I gotta say, although Black Krieg has probably missed a fair bit of damage in the side-on profile firing stakes there, as that E75 and the 54 and the 103 came past, the necessity for heat is a real legit thing later in the game. And you can see things starting to build here already. Uh, the 103 and the 57 Heavy are having a whinge about the meds. I mean, you guys just got outplayed. That's what happened. The green team got outplayed by the red team. The reds played as a unit. They all iron fisted straight through the center of the map. Uh, really, really big risk that, obviously, if they had been flanked. Tough stickers, but there you go. The heat round doesn't get through the T-54 there, but it will come in very, very handy when our Amigo here... Oh, we go to a Hesh round. Cheap premium Hesh is not available, so only cheap Hesh. The heat round is going to become very, very handy on that Jaegeru, and particularly that grub there, the IS-7. When you see an IS-7 game as an FV4202, it can be very demoralizing. I mean, it's a tank that's going to take a long time for you to clear. You've got to do it with uh, either Circle of Deathing or getting very, very lucky on your Hesh penetration rolls in the lower glacis. Basically, You've got to do so much hard work if you don't have the heat rounds in the gun. And that's exactly what our Amigo Black Creek has. He's got those heat rounds. So bully for him, he's actually got a chance here. Now the Waffle Tractor goes down, and it's now one on four. That is a lot of tank to get through. And the panic does set in here for just a little bit. That's a terrible situation to be in. But we've all been there, trying to fire backwards, running away from a bloody Russian heavy tank. There we go. We get a nice penetration roll. The heat does the, 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 the job. And we're nearly 300 hit points of damage there in the I-7. Pulls back, fakes a shot out of the I-7. Comes back in, hits him once in the lower glacis. But now things are about to get real. The Conqueror, the tier 9 Brit Heavy, with the very, very nice gun, has pushed up here as well. And he's going to give the I-7 a hand. Can our man play? 
Can he what? Fakes the Conqueror out, drives backwards, puts the IS-7 in the spin cycle, repairs the tracks, misses another shot. The uh, Conk there absolutely CODs the Conk, drives out of that, past the pushing Jaegeroo, into the back of the E-50. This boy is absolutely all about it. Not the E-50, the E-75. Now back down underneath the Jaegeroo, driving up past the Conk, gets a lucky bounce, but you make your own luck. Stalls out here so he can clear another tank in that E-75. He fires inadvertently, hits him in the hatch, and now we are one on two. What an incredible passage of play. Gets a great shot into the side of the Conk, and there's that awkward, awkward bounce that you often get in the FV422, and people think they're gonna go straight through the turret, but they actually are firing upwards, and when you fire upwards into the 4202, you get all kinds of odd angles and can get bounces. The Conk gets another unlucky bounce. That was just an unlucky one. And the 4202, he flies into the lower in the upper glacis now. Something you should know about the 4202. It has the most ridiculously strong upper glacis you can find in the game. Uh, it is crazy. This and the AMX 50B, two tanks with weak turrets that have stupidly good upper glacis, and he's now cleared the Conqueror. This is insane. Five kills, one to go. Only 787 hit points in the tank, though. And you should know that that is a sub-average alpha roll for that monster tank there, the Jaegeru. The problem we have here is that the Jaegeru is just not giving him any angles. Uh, and that's fair enough. The, uh, the Jaegeru is actually taking a lot of time to shout abuse at his teammates. But he's still not giving our hero an angle. Now, thankfully, he does have the heat gun, the high floor, low ceiling gun on the FV4202. Prefer the Hesh, but right about now, I've got to say, our protagonist has certainly chosen the right weapon. But what's he gonna do? 58, 57, 56, the clock is counting down, and he has absolutely no choice but to engage that big bopper there. He's not giving him anything. There we go, he's got one shot in. Now what's the Yag gonna do here? He hasn't dropped the adrenaline yet. The adrenaline could be absolutely key to this. He's gotta get through a lot of hit points though, and he's only got like 30 seconds to do it. He has to push, the Yag's gone behind the rocks. He's no choice. It's for shut up time right here. Is he gonna get behind him? Is he gonna find right love just, no, oh God, he's in the wrong spot. Oh my God, the Yag got a stupidly low roll on that AP round. This is brutal, he's gotta to get to the back. He's dropped the adrenaline, one in. Come on, man, come on, you can do this. One more, come on, one more. Oh my God, 72, three, two, one. Come on, baby, two, ah! No, you've got to be kidding me. 72 hit points from total domination. That was an incredible game. Hats off, amigo. Absolutely brilliant. Just kept his mouth shut the entire time, despite receiving a heap of crap from his teammates and played it to within an inch of its life. As good a game as you'll ever see in the FE4202. And it had to be good to knock out that E50 game that we saw earlier. What a trio of absolute legends. Uh, the MT25, honestly, it's so rare to see a good game in that tank. You've got to include it. 8,526 damage. Uh, wow. Could have been 8,600 and that would have won it. All we needed was about 1.2 seconds more and we had a winner. Until next time, guys, look after yourselves and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.